For today's video, I'm doing an unboxing and first look at the Power Queen 100 amp lithium battery. I've got a really big lithium battery conversion project I'm gonna be working on in the next few days. So this was really convenient that they reached out to me and offered a battery to check out on the channel. So let's just get right into it, take a look and see what we're working with. So we got our top cover here. Looks like the uh, studs for the top tear me off. Here are your post bolts. Okay, oh, they're right there. And now we just have our battery. Ooh, I like that it has a strap on it. That's nice, let's see how heavy it is. Okay, overall not too bad, can hold it with one hand. It's a lot lighter than a lead acid. So this does not use lithium ion batteries, it uses the lithium iron batteries. These are much more reliable and a lot less prone to failure and a lot safer. They have a lot more charging and discharging cycles in them, so the cells themselves are gonna last a very long time. ABS plastic and it's IP65 waterproof. Oh, this is perfect. Get this all set up and then we can poke around a little bit with our multimeter. Okay, and it comes with two extra studs, so that's nice to have. I'm waiting on my lithium charger to arrive, so I'm really curious to see if uh, there's any charge or what kind of charge comes with the battery. Okay, 13.2, so it comes, comes with a decent charge in it. Okay, so here is the chart that shows the voltage versus the capacity. We were at 13.2, so this is actually about 70% charged. So that's good to know. If you were ordering a battery and you needed to use it pretty soon, it looks like it comes with a really good charge to start. Continuous discharge is 100 amps. It has a continuous load of 1,280 watts. Wow, so this is actually strong enough to run some pretty hefty appliances. If you were to hook up an inverter to this, this would actually work as like um, a backup battery for your house or something like that. You could run like real appliances off this. Yeah, another thing I've seen this used a lot for is camping. People will bring this and it'll actually be like a campsite battery. You charge this up before you go or uh, you know, in your RV as you're driving around and then you got power for like the whole night. 100 amp hours last a very, very long time. Uh, just as a comparison, lead acid batteries are around 100 amps, but you only get about 70% of that power before you drain it too low and then you can't use it anymore. This has 100 full amp hours of power. So you can use this from 100% to 0%. I think the effective amp hours on lead acid batteries is actually like around 60 or 70. So I thought it'd be pretty cool to see the weight difference between a lead acid battery and a lithium battery. So let's try it out. To start, we'll try our removed lead acid battery. And we're sitting at 51.4 pounds. Now let's go ahead and try the lithium. 23.2 pounds. That is literally half the weight of a lead acid battery. That is an awesome, awesome weight savings. In this situation, we're actually going down from two lead acid batteries, so we're saving 75 pounds of weight going down to this lithium in a 12 volt setup. Okay, let's go ahead and get this in. Oh yeah, that fits really, really good. I'm really happy with that. Yep, we're gonna definitely be able to put this in place here. I think I'm gonna run it sideways like that. That's gonna give me a lot of room to run all my connections without getting anything uh, tucked up under the boat and just being able to see everything easier. All right, well, after having this battery installed in the boat for a couple weeks now, I can give some really great first impressions on the battery. Overall, it has worked absolutely flawless. I have not had one single issue with this battery since I've got it installed in this setup. Um, in a separate video, I'm gonna detail how I converted this boat over from a 24 volt to a 12 volt setup that allowed me to replace two lead acid batteries with a single lithium. I won't get into the details on this video, but I can tell you that one of the main things I used this battery for was running a trolling motor. And I've had this boat, this is a pretty big boat, out on the water trolling for days at a time. I'm talking literally the entire time I'll motor out and then just troll all day. This battery has not even taken a dent to capacity. It has kept all the electronics on this boat alive, including the trolling motor, radio, lights, literally everything. So as far as capacity goes, 100 amp hours is absolutely perfect for a boat. I honestly can't see ever needing any more than that. And honestly, it's probably overkill, but 
I'd always rather have more capacity than less, especially for something as important as your trolling motor. Now, I wanted to make sure I had some time with this battery before I recommended it. And at this point, I have no hesitation to say that this is a really good lithium battery option. Uh, the battery holds its charge really well. I rarely, if ever, have to charge before I'm going out. I'll usually just throw this on the charger just as an afterthought because the capacity is just really, really up there. I have a NOCO Gen X2 battery charger on it. It handles the charging no problem. This is actually a two-bank charger, which handles the lead-acid starter battery for the motor, and then also the lithium battery. So charging the two has not been an issue at all. As far as reliability goes, I've had no issues with overheating. I've run the trolling motor for hours at a time with absolutely no issues. So in that regard, it's really, really stable. Uh, same with the charging, no issues with overheating. The built-in BMS handles the charging system really well. The only quirk that I've noticed is that the NOCO will take a while to read that the battery is actually full capacity. From what I understand, the battery itself has a built-in charge protection where it will fast charge about 80% of the battery and then it will trickle charge the last 20%. I believe that's a built-in feature for the safety of the battery cells. It keeps them running better when it's charged at a slower capacity. So when I first hooked this up to the charger, I thought that it was taking so long to charge, but that's just how the system works. It will charge it up really fast to about 80% or so and then the last 20% might take just as long as it took to get to 80%. But again, that's a protection to keep the battery cells as healthy as possible. And honestly, 80% is more than enough for multiple trips out. So it's never really uh, had any effect on anything. If you guys were interested in checking out this battery, I'll throw a link in the description. They also gave me a coupon code to share with you guys. So I'll have that down there as well. If you guys want to see how I converted this boat over to lithium, I'll have a video out on that really, really soon. I'm really excited. It worked out so, so well. Uh, absolutely no regrets on that. If you guys found this video helpful, don't forget to let me know by hitting that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, including what's going on with the bass boat and also with this John boat over here, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.